Welcome back to A Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and tonight um, I am delighted to see you guys. It's Kevin McCluskey and Ian Conroy. Not so delighted with the performance tonight. Obviously very frustrating. A um, couple of the Axon troops were in the stadium tonight. They were messaging us saying that you know, it was left with about 40% of the fans in the ground, Celtic fans that is, and no wonder. I mean, Kevin, I always feel for the travelling support. That's the first thing I'm going to start off with tonight, right? Every single away game, no matter where we go in the world, you've got people who give up their time, their uh, holidays, their money, they go away and they watch Celtic in Europe and further abroad. Yeah, but, I mean, before the game, there is natural positivity positivity, you do think we can do it and it is genuine based on what you've seen beforehand um, we spoke about the first half earlier on I'm sure we will again, but things just didn't go our way and then the second half we just capitulated, really mm. with ball into pieces mm-hmm. um, we're against a very good side so let's not forget that, Atletico Madrid's one of the top teams in Europe it was going to be difficult, but we seem to do everything in our power to make it doubly difficult than it had to be um, and yet, the guys and girls that have gone out to that game, that you say, that have spent their hard-earned cash to go over there. I mean, it's it's bad enough for us to sit in the warmth of our own houses and watch the game and and then have to talk about it. Those guys are out there, they're living it right now. And you feel for them, absolutely. You know, spent your money, you, you maybe expect to lose the game, but you don't expect to lose it in that fashion. And that's just, that's the bit that hurts the most, I think. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've suffered some horrific away defeats. Uh, the one being mentioned tonight, 7 nothing v Barca back in 2016. We've been here before, um, and it is tough. That's the first time in a while, though. I know that we got a paste in Madrid last season, Ian. Um, that's the first time that I've really felt out of my depth, though, uh, in, in Europe over the last three seasons, I would say. That, that could have been anything tonight. Yeah. It could have been. Um, what can you say, really? It was before when the group was drawn. I personally thought we, we were due. We were going to get tanked tonight, uh, and and we were we were tanked. You know, um, it's a shame because in the first half I thought we acquitted ourselves really well. It's all left some butts and maybes. You know, um, they're a top class side. The golf is is undeniable. Um, I think if we're measuring ourselves against this, this the, the likes of Atletico Madrid and Real Madrids, we're going to be disappointed you know, continually. You know, there's a massive, massive gap. Um, that's not me just accepting mediocrity or, you know, lying down. But we have to be realistic about these things as well. You know, and this is again, we we, we we've put the ball back in the in the boards but, uh, um, court. What is it we actually want to achieve? What is it really realistically? We can't just, you know expect to be winning these games and, and expect to be in this company and, 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 and do well, you've got to, we've got to actually invest, you know, and, and I don't, I don't mean like, you know, gung ho and just, and just, you know, gamble the family silverware, but there has to be a balance met. And one, but this money ball pisses me off, man. It's just a, the amount of money we waste when we could actually distill, distill it and get actual quality. Look at the old successful Liverpool teams back in the seventies and eighties. Every season, despite the fact that they won everything or pretty much everything, they'd add two, maybe three players at most of quality and just keep evolving, gentle evolution every season. We should be getting to that point and not keep selling players. And you know, so anyway, that's my you're right because you're sitting on a mountain of cash. It's like, what's his name, Scrooge McDuck, who used to swim in his coinage whenever he felt the need, you know, and it, it gave him a wee boost. And it's true, and by the way. When you make comparisons back to those days, Ian, people might say, oh, that's irrelevant, the game's changed and all the rest of it. But really, you know, when you're going out there and you're buying maybe seven, six or seven projects, I'm, I'm going to call them project players who you're looking to develop to essentially make money off, and you're not buying enough players who are going to make that immediate impact in the team that's, that's actually going to get a first-team jersey. Not enough of that has happened in recent times. Poor transfer um, record last season and then a really frustrating transfer window this campaign yes I know that there was some circumstances around that the change of manager things in place legacy signings I get all that 
But to go into the Champions League ill prepared is unforgivable. And I, I get the frustration because I'm as frustrated as the next man. Good news, Ryan says it. You're turning up for a gunfight with a water pistol. These teams have got so much quality that they're going to punish you. And we were punished this evening. Um, come hail, rain, snow, shine, and uh, whatever other uh, inclement weather we might come up against, any other result we might come up against, we will cover the game as we have done for the last three and a half years. There's been some tough ones, Kev. Um, I remember Ferenc Varos was, oh, that was really poor that particular season. And yeah, you come on at 6 nothing down and you're gutted as a Celtic fan first and foremost. It's embarrassing. Um, I couldn't really care what any other fans of any other team think about their performance because I, I really believe in taking care of your own backyard and, and looking after that. And I really want to bring in your comments this evening because we're all feeling the same. Patrick Harold, painful. Yeah, painful to watch. Um, you know, you're sitting there at 4 nothing, thinking, right, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be ever going to be happy with a 4 nothing defeat, Kev. But you just don't want to lose another one and then another one. And even at 6 nothing, there was the fear of going to 7 or 8. And then you start thinking, why are we here? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we doing this? to the club's reputation. Um, a once proud European reputation. I always hark back to the 60s and 70s European run that we went on. And, I, and I'll say it again, um, because from the the 12 seasons from 64 to 76, Celtic were involved um, in at least the quarterfinal of European competition on nine occasions. You know, and, and by the way, that is not meaningless, Kev. That, that's a heritage, that's a tradition, that's a reputation. And nights like tonight tarnish it, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. They make us a bit of a laughing stock again in Europe. Um, when it looked as though we were getting that reputation back because the performances last season, I think, were a, a real step up in class from what they had been. And the performances in Europe this season up to tonight had been a continuation of that, I felt. You kind of feel we're, we're getting that respectability back. And then tonight, I mean, oh, it's it sets you back a few paces, definitely. Um, I thought I agree as well. Like I'm not interested in what any fans of any other team have got to say about this tonight. They can come on and gloat in the comments if they want, but I'm not going to look at them. I don't care. We're the only ones that get to feel this pain that we're feeling tonight uh, and discuss it and kind of talk mm. ourselves through it and get ourselves back motivated for the game on Sunday against Aberdeen. Um, but yeah, that was tough. I think Ian, Ian said it, it could have been almost whatever Atletico wanted it to be in the second no. half. No. And that's that's the bit that really gets me because there are other teams in Europe that would be on the end of that hiding at 3 nothing down after an hour and would shut up shop. They would just defend for their lives. I mean, if I done it, there's a wee bit of me that was a... I don't know if I was... Uh, supporting of that move or not because you're going to, at least we're trying to play with our style and we're st still trying to keep that going but there comes a point when it's like, just stop we're already dead, we've lost the game let's just not, get, let's just not make it any worse I know. Oh, and then yeah. it goes to 4 and 5 and 6, it's every cross ball that comes in, you think it's going to be a goal anytime we won a header, and this just bugged me so much, every, anytime we won a header when a cross came in, instead of trying to put it out wide, but there's to, to limit the danger, we put it right back in the middle, right into the circle, generally on the foot of Edge Griezmann, of the box. Aye, Griezmann or Marata or Lino. It's like a shooting the drill. Yeah. Being belted back in. Yeah. It was it, it was basic stuff know, that we got wrong. And again, those are the things that really kill me because you just think you don't have to be a great team to not make that mistake. You just have to know the basics. Well, I, I stopped counting. Uh, it was four and five of the goals followed headers like that that you've described and they're landing right in that semicircle outside the box as I say it's like a shooting drill where you're laying them up and then the the midfields are behind the the opposing player where the ball is dropping to their feet and it's just a case of right defenders ru rushing them turning their backs hoping that they get a deflection and more often than not tonight we didn't get that deflection we're, we're up against some real real quality and that was so frustrating, Kev, because it is kind of the basic defending principles. Um, we highlighted it against Motherwell when we lost the goal. You know, the, the clearance wasn't good enough. I think it was Liam Scales. The header goes out and it lands right. In fact, it was Callum McGregor. Apologies. And it lands right in the edge of the box. And you think, 
you're not defending the second ball. I mean, I've heard you're going back to under 13s with that kind of shout. Um, Stephen Sloan is frustrated with Brennan's tactics. You reckon we got it wrong? I'm going to go back to this one then. After the team was announced, Ian, did we have any complaints? Probably not. What was the talking point? Bernardo in for Turnbull, probably. Did we expect, I know it was spoken about in the bulletin this afternoon, but did we really expect for us to go out with three centre-halves, you know, effectively playing with five defenders, two who can turn into left and right midfielders in that inverted position? Did we really expect Brennan to do that? Probably not. But maybe when it looked as though the game was gone, even at half time, I would have expected maybe us to shore it up a wee bit. Ian, he done it in the first leg, no, the first leg, sorry, the first game at Celtic Park. I, I, I did feel that we were kind of left to to really get a hammering because we we did not take that defensive move when the time was right. I mean, Phillips didn't get on the pitch, Lagerbelt didn't get on the pitch. Um, dispose of your wingers, bring on a defender, try and make it a little bit more respectable, like we did against Feyenoord. Were you surprised we didn't do that, Ian? Um, I didn't really think too much into it. I think the game's game was gone. I like to think perhaps Brendan was throwing players in to see how they adapted in, in, in a situation like that. You know, finding out about character. You know, that, that's taking that's taking positives out of, out, of, out of the negative. You know, we've had our pants pulled down, uh, and so you know, what's it, seven seven or three doesn't really matter to me. You know, it's the it's the manner of the defeat, and I think that the first half, you know, it's F spot F, F, F spots and maybe's again, you know. But if Joe Hart doesn't punch that ball and we don't lose that early goal, we were playing really well. Even after we lost the goal, we were play, playing really well, and we didn't look we didn't look out of our depth. Um, it just seemed that we we, we our confidence was eroded the further we the further we got into the game after the sending off. That was it. We just it seemed to kill the character. Hmm. Uh, and that's what was, I'm talking about in terms of the, in terms of, of our character. You know, was Brendan rather than going chucking chucking it on and chucking defenders on and, and, and going ultra defensive, just throwing players on to see see how they adapt and how they cope in a pressure situation when the chips are down, um, to see how if he can count on them as the season goes into a running. You know, if it goes to down to the wire, I don't know. Well, th- this is the point where you you look at tonight and you think, well. You know what? We don't really have much time to uh, moan and groan about it because you're back on that flight. You're coming back to Glasgow. You've got a game at the weekend against Aberdeen on Sunday. And Kevin, there's two things I, I often think about on nights like tonight when you're you're really taking a hammering. And the first one is how does Brendan react to the press? Because you know what? We, we talk about the high paid gaffers and players and all the rest of it. That must be the last thing you want to do after a game like tonight is go out and face the, the press. And there's a number of different uh, press commitments that you've got to do, but you know I, I am interested to know what what Brendan says. What does he say uh, tonight after that? Because I, I agree with Ian. I think we did we did kind of start off well. You've got the first goal that was so poorly defended, not just by Hart but also by Johnston. Um, and I think that the throne wasn't defended properly. And again, you know we're we're heading the ball out to the edge of the box and asking them to play shooty in. Really, really poor goal to lose. Then we get a man sent off. We can argue the toss all day about the red card. And then we lose that second goal in the injury period of the first half. And you go in at 2 nothing down. Uh, you know, as you're looking at that first half and thinking, you know what, other than the issues that we've we've already had against Fire you know, etc., the, the unlucky nature of the game against Lazio, I'm sorry, it won't wash this time down because it was a proper capitulation. What does Brennan say to the press? But not just that, what does he say to the, the team from now until Sunday? What what happens in terms of the morale, Kev? Is is this a sucker punch? Or is there a feeling around the camp that it's sure up, it's kind of separate from the bread and butter? I mean, how, how do we react to this? Well, on the last one, they, they shouldn't really treat it any differently. Because if the players are going into that game thinking it's Europe, it doesn't matter. Like a free hit, yeah. Yeah. Aye, it's a free hit, then they don't deserve to be at the football club, in my opinion. And you can say what you want about the ambition of the club and where we're at in terms of our actual big size and stature and where we should be competing. If you're playing for a club at the biggest Celtic with the global fan base that we've got, and you don't think that you, you deserve to be playing in the Champions League, you don't deserve to play for the club. So I hope straight away that that's not been their attitude. And I don't think it will be. 
I think they'll be approaching the game because they're professionals, they want to go and win and do their best. They were just completely outclassed today. And that's, in a sense, fine because it can happen. But if you're Rodgers after that, both, this is where he ends his trust. I know. Because it's a massive, this is a, when your a psychology comes into it big time. Because you can't go through the players for this as much as you might want to, because they're going to be pretty damaged after that if they are professionals. This is hurting their pride big time. And you can't kick them when they're down. So you've got to try and softly raise them back up somehow. Um, whilst at the same time, getting a point across to them that that level of performance and those basic errors that they've committed tonight are unacceptable. So it's a really, really tough job that he's got. As I've said it before, you know, that's why guys like him get paid the big bucks and why I'm sitting here spouting nonsense and acts on because, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be him right now trying to raise the players for that. It's a master's degree in diplomacy, it, you're right. It is, it is. Your only hope is that there's enough real professionals in there that mm. you actually don't need to do anything. And like you say, professional pride has been wounded and they all want to get back out in the pitch on Sunday improve a point. You want them to be hurting, Kev, because we spoke um, in the previous bulletin around that platform. We talk about the platform that Celtic provides. You can pull a player from obscurity of the third tier of English football, put them on this platform, and he gets a man of the match against the Atletico Madrid at home, and then these more, you know, the richer clubs from the richer league start sniffing about. You give them that platform, that opportunity. But it's got to be more than that, Ian. Because guys like us and all those fans that travelled over to Spain, giving up their time with their family and their, their holidays and spending their hard-earned um, cash, it means more to us than that. It's not just about you know a platform and then just using us as a platform. We need the performances, and we need better performances than tonight as well. Now, the thing is as well, on a night like this evening, Ian, having done so many of these games virtually, personally, virtually everyone for the last three and a half years. Um, you also try not to throw the baby out with the bathwater in this situation. And the only thing I can go back to is the performance at home against the same team. We are, you know, we could have won the game and, and we've came away from that um, with, with lots of plaudits. So if you're going to take the plaudits, the flip side of that is you're going to have to take a, a criticism when you go out and you get hammered 6-0. But, I mean, is, it, is the golf as big as that, because, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I'm thinking, all right, we've done all right tonight, and, you know, we can build on this. Tonight, I'm feeling the exact opposite. It's like one step forward, three back this evening. I think if we play them ten times, we get spanked seven or eight times. That's the difference in class. So, 2-2 two, two at home with our crowd behind us, it's a formidable atmosphere in, in, in place. Uh, it's you know widely regarded as one of the best in the in the in the, in the world. It's Celtic Park, so that's always that always works in our favour. I think on balance and over you know if we, if we average it out, we're we're never going to be going toe to toe um, regularly with 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 a, with a side of that quality. I'm thinking as well about you know Brendan Rodgers and he came back. Apparently, his salary is the best salary ever any Celtic manager has ever received. Has he come back just for a big payday? I doubt it because he could have got he could have earned more in England. This is kind of like the, the, the moment now where, where Brendan Rogers needs to um, use this as bargaining with the board. You know, what, what is it we're actually trying to... I said this before you know, in the last chat we had. What is it we're trying to achieve? Realistically, we're trying to achieve. We could have predicted this was going to happen. This is what happened last time under Rogers. This is what happened under Ange. So we can't just blame each manager that comes through the, 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 the sort of the revolving door. There's a, there's a one common denominator, and that's the board. Mm. Um, the owners, so yeah. we're not doing anything differently other than changing some personnel, right? And it's in terms of um, the, the pond that we're fishing in, we're, we're fishing in the same pond, um, albeit you know with, with different names. So that's the question, really. You know, what, what is it? What is it? Is, is Brendan Rogers going to bought into? Was it was he sold a dummy? Is it is that poison chalice ultimately that he's that he's, he's come back into? If it was me, I'd I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be terminado again, um, pretty soon. Because it's he's, he's, it's his hands behind his back, um, it's it's cheating the, the supporters um, in terms of the, you know the, the, what we're, we're, we're espousing in terms of the intent intent to, to do. 
we're buying into it and it's just it's falling flat as usual. So yeah. Just be honest and say, look, you know what? This is this is the, the, the sum total of what, of what we want to achieve. We're happy here. We'll keep paying ourselves the dividends. You guys are happy enough. Well, that's our level. Fair enough. You can't say we might not like it. But we can't say fairer than that. But don't sell us bullshit and then you know, you know, pee down our back and tell us it's raining outside. You know what I mean? Well, the thing is, being sold a dummy. That that's my big concern. It's my big concern because Brendan Rodgers comes back in, Kevin, and he looks like a. A different animal this time round, you know, just the way that he goes about his business. Uh, and I'm talking about even in the press conferences, for example, we know that he's been rebuilding his legacy. Um, there was a CSC event fairly recently. He was talking about how much it impacted him. You know, we just think these guys in football in the modern day are faceless entities that that love making money and will always go where there's more, more money. But Ian makes a point there. There was a offer on the table from Saudi Arabia that would have made him a more wealthy man than he already is. Um, and I think that what was playing on his mind is this legacy. You know, um, I don't know how many times Brendan had been at Celtic Park before he joined us as manager, but often with people who are involved in football, you know, they've got commitments when we're playing. I, get, I totally get it. Uh, but I, I certainly know that his family were massive, massive, and are massive Celtic fans. So he's rebuilding that legacy, but he'll be doing it in such a way, Kev. He's still a young man when it comes to management. And, you know, I don't want to think about this, but he will manage after Celtic. He doesn't want to tarnish his own legacy, go on and become the worst performing team in Champions League and all this kind of stuff. He doesn't want that on his own CV on a, on a personal level. But he also doesn't want to tarnish it. Come back a second time, all you ever won, Brendan, was uh, the Tin Pot League. You know, because he's going back, potentially back down south, and we know how they view Scottish football. And you just hope that's not the case in terms of Terminado. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Ian. It's, I just got a flashback. I've got a flashback there. In many ways, I'm thinking he's just telling us he can speak Spanish by pulling that one out. Is that even Spanish? I don't know. I, you know, I'm not bilingual. I'm, I'm barely um, uh, able to speak the English tongue. So, yes, that's, that's a concern for me. But going into January, it really is, I feel, Kevin, if you're going to pull out any kind of positive, away, Brendan going to the board and saying, look, we're no good enough. We need more quality. And if you want that quality, I need a better budget and I need a, a more focused approach to the recruitment. I don't want a scattergun approach where you bring in nine players, hopefully one or two of them are okay and we can sell them at a profit. We don't want to return to that, Kev. No, oh, we don't. We don't. And um, he's already got the big budget, or he should do, for January. Because as we said before, you've got £25 million pounds of free Saudi Arabian money kicking around in the bank that no one expected to have. That's sitting there waiting to be to be invested in the team, or it should be. Instead, it's going to line someone else's pockets, probably. Um, but yeah, you, I don't know. Is it just because we've taken a scalping tonight and we're a bit raw and we're going to read into things a little bit more than we should? Or Sometimes whatever? it's good. It's good it. to look through the, the optics at times, okay, you know? See it, though. Yeah, and yeah. You, you can't help but do it. And it does make you question... What you thought was the truth before, in a way, and you'll go, Yeah, was Brendan sold something here? Sold a dummy that, that's not there? Was he told a pipe dream by Desmond that, you know, I'll back you in the transfer market, you'll get the players you want, we have ambitions, and then it turns out it's not necessarily the case? I don't know, but the signs aren't uh, exactly great to suggest otherwise. So, yeah, like. Maybe he has used tonight, as Ian said as well, to put the boys on, to give them, well, to give them the chance to kind of show character, what, what they like in this kind of situation, but also to prove the point of this is this is our reserves and they're not good enough. If you our first team isn't good enough, the reserves definitely aren't. If the board really wants to take us forward into Europe, um, and bearing in mind that next season, when we, when we get back in the Champions League, it's a different format. And we're probably only going to get, again, was it six or eight games because there's no drop down into a Europa League. Yeah. So it's, it is it is a time now where, if not Brendan, someone must challenge the board and what their ambition is for the club to take us forward. If the board is happy just to be there and collect the money, like Ian said, at least have the balls to come out and tell us that. And then... We can lump it, but at least we know what it is. Otherwise, we now absolutely need to start to look to January as planning for next season. And we do need to look at seeing who can we bring in. And it has to be 
targeted players, the targeted positions that are going to come into the first 11. No more right now. No more project signings. We've got enough. Squad's big enough. It's bloated. We need to get rid of some players and we need to bring in players that are going to actually improve the starting 11. Yeah, uh, we've seen... Maybe, I, I maybe, we've maybe seen... that's run over, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I think we've seen three sides to Brendan over the two periods. The first one was this guy that came in in the blaze of glory and uh, you almost felt that you could throw him anything and get a tune out of it. He was that that good and thorough and the preparation was you know beyond belief. And then there was the second version first time round where it was almost as if he had checked out and Ian remembers the Terminado and, you know, even when he was he was disengaged with the signing of Shred and you, you knew something was up, right? And then the, the, the third version is second time round, this more humble version of Brendan who's come in, still fiercely competitive and ambitious. Um, and you think to yourself, right, OK, we've got a, a manager there that might have an ambition. He shares it with quite a lot of Celtic fans. Not nobody, none, none of the fifteen hundred watching live tonight thinks that that we're going to win the Champions League. But we're, we're realistic in that respect. But what you want to do is you want to do better than we're we're already doing because you know, we're not even competing at this level. And what you also got to remember, Kev, is the fact that this guaranteed Champions League group stage football doesn't last that much longer if your you know your results continue to go along this this trend, um, and then you're going to be thrown into the qualification rounds and uh, you know if we're going to get guaranteed eight matches in the in the kind of group stages um and there's a, a qualification process that was horrendous and that started affecting other things as well like the planning was all out you weren't getting your players in on time for the champions league qualifiers so we don't want to return to that scenario and i really am keen to to hear some of your thoughts i know it's a difficult night tonight robert johnson reckons there's no ambition certainly in some parts of the club paul mclean uh, time for Rogers meant to become heroes. That was 12.30 today. It's funny how topsy-turvy it is uh, when you support Celtic, isn't it? Well, were the heroes tonight? No, they weren't. Stephen Sloan, uh, we would still have lost even without the red card. Yeah, listen, it's a good point. I mean, they're a great side. You're playing them away from home. Would it have been a 6 nothing? You know, that that's a big question, I think. Jonathan Brown, I have seen disappointment after disappointment, but tonight um, the red totally changed the game. So Jonathan uh, disagrees slightly on that one as well. We must learn from this. How many times have we heard that? And that's why John's quoting it. We're not going to say it. We, we must learn from it. I think what it comes to is trying to get um, an, a, an alignment of the ambition um, and the, the ambition of Brendan Rodgers matching that alongside the ambition of what the fans want and what the board really want. Because Brendan was asked the question, Ian, in his first press conference. In fact, I think it was James McKenzie, our very own James McKenzie, asked him the question, what is your aspirations in Europe? And, you know, there wasn't that immediate answer, Ian. He went on to say, you know, let's do better than we did last season. Let's get a win. Let's get a win in the Champions League. But, you know, what are the, the, the aspirations and the ambitions? We don't actually know, Ian, do we? Because that's not something that the club talk about. I remember Bankier, uh, Ian Bankier, former chairman, his ambitions were non-existent. He, he didn't think we were good enough. And it was almost as if, why compete? Why throw money at it? Because we're not good enough. And that really annoyed us. So have they got this uh, policy now, Ian? Let's not say anything, because we're just going to annoy the fans if we tell them the truth. Yeah. be interesting to know what the uh, the director's KPIs are. You know, um, I imagine they're not, they don't they don't, don't align with the fans. Um, but that's why I was touching on before. Like, you know, at least come out and be honest about it, you know. Um, but I suppose in defence of... The guys that we're talking about, um, the Champions League in, in Europe, mainly the Champions League, it's weighted against teams like Celtic. That's why we've, for years and years and years, we have a generational having to qualify. So we're not, you know, sometimes winning our own league and we're not not even getting getting into the Champions League. You know, so there's all, all that revenue over all those years we lost. Yeah. Whether we would have invested that, that money had that had we automatically got into the, the Champions League remains to be seen. Uh, not remains to be seen. Sorry, is a different argument. Probably not, to be honest. Um, but at least if we we, we had we would have had more of a, a semblance of, of of knowing that we could we could we could outlay certain amounts of money for quality over over a longer period of time, which then would help us compete um, more robustly in the, in the in the Champions League. So it's kind of almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. Um, so yeah, there's the, 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 the setup of the competition plays its part as well. But um, yeah. 
And the thing with that as well, Ian, with regards to bringing in the more money, it would have just meant that Scrooge McDuck would have required a bigger vault that he can swim in because I'm not sure we would have gone out and bought, bought those three or four players at five to seven million pounds in the summer. You know, and this is the thing because you get you get sold the dream. Like last season, we bring in Jot and Carter Vickers. You think, wow, didn't expect the two of them to come in on permanent deals. Um, you know, but then you follow that up with what we've done in this particular market. And, I, and I'm always at pains to suggest and, and outline the fact and underline rather the fact that I'm not writing any of the players off. They might become brilliant players for Celtic, but it's the type of signing that I've got an issue with and the amount of that type of signing rather than the immediate impact player that um, was actually mentioned in the chairman's message, uh, you know, trying to buy players for development alongside a balance of immediate impact players, which we've not had. Um, thank you very much, Robbie, for your support of the channel. Let's be honest, boys, the team, the team's competing in the Conference League. We would be doing well, uh, make the last four. Europa League is out of our depth, full stop. Um, and then we've got the uh, the situation now where we're not even going to get the chance to play in the Europa League. You know, that's the frustration. We don't know where our level is at the moment. We've been talking about this since episode one. Go and check it out on the YouTube six and a half years ago. Me and Kevin Graham talking about our European aspirations and where we sit in terms of um, Europe. And we're still talking about it all this time later. Um, it's a sore one to take. Thanks to the 1,500 people who uh, are currently watching this live stream. Um, and to echo Kevin's points, if anybody's tuning in for the crack, um, fans of other football teams, then OK, no problem. We'll take it on the chin. I'm not really interested in, to hear what you've got to say. We've been hammered tonight and we'll be the first to criticise that. Uh, we're not going over the score with it. I'm looking forward to hearing what Brendan Rogers says in his post-match. And regardless of what happens, we'll be back at 12.30 tomorrow on the Axon Bullet. And thank you, everybody, for your support. And thank you to Kevin McCluskey and Ian Conroy for not pulling a sickie on the post-match or claiming that their dog peed on their Wi-Fi connection or whatever else it could have been. Um, thank you, Kevin McCluskey and Ian Conroy, for joining me on a Celtic State of Night. Cheers, guys. Excellent. Cheers.